Hello friends, this video on heredity and evolution part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we have reached to the second section of this lesson that is evolution. So as the term evolution says, it is, it is related to the term evolve that means origin. So here we will talk about the origin of different species which exist on this earth. So let us have an introduction to evolution. What is evolution? We all know that a variety of living organisms exist on this earth. And each of these organisms undergo reproduction to bring more and more organisms of its kind on earth. For example, elephants reproduce to bring more elephants on earth. Giraffes reproduce to give more giraffes on earth. Human beings reproduce to have more human beings, right? So, the process of reproduction helps in getting more and more organisms of each kind on earth. Now, it is seen that all organisms of different kinds, be it plants, be it humans, be it elephants, be it dogs, be it bacteria, fungi, all kind of living organisms originated from a common ancestor. The statement is quite unbelievable, right? That how can a bacteria and uh, as simple as a bacteria and as complex as a human being can have a same ancestor, right? But we will now see in this section that how evolution can happen. That means how reproduction can give rise to small, small variations and those variations can gradually give rise to new organisms or new species. So that is what we are going to study in this lesson on evolution. We will actually see that there are so many evidences which actually tell us that these different variety of organisms which we see, they are all derived from some common ancestor. So with this thought in mind, let us start with variation because when we talk about evolution, the most basic thing is variation. Now we have already uh, discussed about variation in our previous lesson on reproduction, right? So what are these variations? These are some changes or some new features or new characteristics which appear in the new organisms during reproduction. For example, when I talk about the asexual reproduction, maybe the fission in case of amoeba or yeast or maybe this um, hydra budding which is seen in hydra so whichever example you take in case of asexual reproduction what is the basis of asexual reproduction the dna of the parent gets copied now during this dna copying some errors might occur by chance which can give rise to some variation in the offspring right now these variations then get carry forwarded in the next generation right now in asexual reproduction the amount of variation is comparatively lesser when compared to the sexual reproduction so here what happens the parent dna will get copied in the daughter dna right but during this copying there might be some small errors like this so here if you look at this position a small error has taken place so which i have uh, highlighted in blue color here now what is what are all these things in a dna they are, these are nothing but the sequence of nucleotides now during copying sometimes the sequence might get altered so those small changes in the sequence of the nucleotides can cause some differences some minor differences in the new organism right but those small variations which happen can later on give rise to more variations so let us take a small example let us take the example of the fission in amoeba let us suppose this was the parent amoeba so this was the parent amoeba so this parent amoeba amoeba underwent fission it gave rise to two amoeba right so the nucleus divided cytoplasm also got divided so it gave rise to two amoeba now while copying of DNA took place, maybe there was some small error like this which happened just by chance because of which this amoeba had a little longer arm when compared to the parent amoeba, right? So the appearance of this amoeba is little different than the parent amoeba, 
right? So this is nothing but a result of a small variation. Now this amoeba, let us suppose in turn will again undergo binary fission, right? So this amoeba when it undergoes binary fission, maybe again there is some error in DNA copying because of which the color or the appearance of the amoeba changed. So now when these kind of changes keep taking place over generations and generations, a time can come when the new amoeba which is formed, it becomes quite different from the old parent amoeba, right? So in the first case, it was only a change in the arm length. But in the next case, there was also a change in the appearance or the color, right? So when you take together the change in color as well as the change in arm length and when you would compare it with this parent amoeba, the difference is more, right? Similarly, when this amoeba will again undergo reproduction, sometime or the other, again some variations might take place. Now, these variations, however, in case of uh, this asexually reproducing organisms is quite less, right? This is quite less in case of asexual reproduction. But when we talk of sexual reproduction, the variations are even more because there it is not only about DNA copying, it is also about contribution from two different parents, right? So the possibility of variation increases a lot in case of sexual reproduction, right? So here you got a small idea that how a small change when carried over generations and generations can become a considerably huge change, right? So let us now look at the concept of variation in case of sexually reproducing organisms. So we can see a variety of sexually reproducing organisms, including human beings, right? So let us try to understand the concept which happens here because of which the variation is more with the help of example of human beings. So in human beings during reproduction what happens the sperm and the egg they fuse together right. So this sperm has 23 chromosomes that is 22 autosomes and one sex chromosome. Similarly this egg cell also has 22 autosomes and one sex chromosome. Now what happens? These two together forms the zygote, right? So in the zygote, what happens? Let us suppose, let us suppose these are the chromosomes carried by the sperm. Let us suppose I am denoting them in this color. Let us suppose these are the chromosomes carried by the sperm that is I told 22 chromosomes and one sex chromosome I'm not drawing the entire thing I'm just trying to explain what happens so suppose these violet colored things are what is coming from the sperm similarly the uh, egg cell will also have some autosomes so let me represent that with a different color so let us suppose the chromosomes which are coming from the female body they are represented in pink color now what happens when the zygote is formed one chromosome from the female will pair up with one chromosome from male. So it will pair up somewhat like this. Let us suppose if these are the female chromosomes and the violet ones are the male chromosomes. So here you can see in the zygote they have paired up one from the father, one from the mother. So these chromosomes will then pair up and then they will again together form how many chromosomes it will be 22 autosomes from here 22 autosomes from here that is a total of 44 autosomes one sex chromosome from here one sex chromosome from here that is two sex chromosomes so 44 plus 2 that is a total of 46 chromosomes so this zygote will have 46 chromosomes right so now what do we expect from this zygote so this zygote is made of each cell inside this zygote now this zygote will keep on dividing, it will form embryo, it will form fetus, then it will form a small child, that small child will grow to become a, an, a human being, an adult, right? So that person, all the cells inside that person is a combination of the cells from both the parents, right? Therefore this zygote will show mixed traits of both parents, it will have some paternal traits, it will have some maternal traits. On top of that, it will have some traits which are neither inherited from any of his parents. So those traits will be new to him. So those traits are known as 
the variations. So they are called as variations. So let us take an example to understand it even better. So let us look at this example. So here you can see a family where this couple have these two kids, right? So there are certain traits which they have inherited from their parents. For example, the black hair of this kid is inherited from his father. The brown hair of this kid is inherited from his mother. But if you look at the eyes, this big blue eyes of this kid is neither inherited from her mother nor the father. Father has got black eyes, mother has got brown eyes, but the kid has got blue eyes. So this blue eyes are a variation. That means it is not present in any of the parents, but it is present in the kid. So these are some of the new features which come up in the next generation during reproduction. And these variations or over due course of time, sometimes may even give rise to a new organism or a new species altogether. So with this small introduction on variation, I think we are good to go with evolution. So let us see what exactly is evolution. What do we mean by evolution? It is the change in the inherited characteristics of biological populations over successive generations. That means the characteristics which are inherited from parents, the change in those characteristics over successive generations. So evolution will not happen in a generation or two. It will happen only after several generations. As I gave you the example of that amoeba, right? So in the first generation, the only change was that the amoeba had a little longer arm. But with successive generations, the changes which will be seen will be more. So over a due course of time, maybe the change is so vast that it altogether give rise to a new organism. Right? So that is evolution. So it is a gradual process in which something changes into a different and usually more complex or better form. And the changes, the changes as, as it is said, whatever happens, happens for good. Right? We are all aware of this proverb. So this evolution also, it, is, it doesn't happen all of a sudden. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. It happens at its own pace. But whatever changes take place, it is, it is observed and it is studied and seen that generally the changes are complex. That means from simple organisms, complex organisms are formed. Or from the existing organisms, better organisms are formed. So whatever happens, happens for better. So better things are formed. It is a continuous process. That is evolution or this change never ends. It keeps on happening and it is happening, happening even today. So now hereafter what we will talk about is that how do we know that evolution had ever happened? How do we know that all the living organisms that we see or that we come across, they have all, they all arose from a common ancestor. So we will try to look at those aspects that how do we know that evolution had ever happened? So now once we know that okay evolution had happened, so we actually know the concept of evolution and so we say that evolution is still happening. Still there are changes which are taking place with every generation and those changes in due course of time are giving rise to new organisms or complex organisms or better organisms right so this is all about evolution so let us start digging into it let us start seeing how this process actually thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos Attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.